Hey there, hi there, ho there, and welcome to Mike's Hard Reviews. My name is Mike. I'm one of the bartenders at the Hilton Gardens Inn Hotel, and today things are looking extremely different. Very, very different. The reason why things are so different today is because today is a very different episode. Starting this past Monday, uh, just following the Saturday when I released my last video, I started doing what is called a dry week, where for an entire week's time you don't take in any alcohol whatsoever, and you assess whether or not you're starting to develop dependency or, you know, addiction type issues. It's basically a reset for your system so that you know where you're at in terms of how you handle alcohol. Very proud to say mine's going very, very well. I haven't had any problems with not consuming alcohol <laughs> since Monday. Uh, but because I can't consume any alcohol during the week when I would normally produce this episode, I decided that we're going to take a slightly different approach and talk about something a little bit different. Mocktails. So what exactly is a mocktail? Well, think about it literally. Mock as in fake, fraud, foe, F-A-U-X, uh, tail as in cocktail. It is a fake cocktail that uses non-alcoholic ingredients to create a similar interaction between ingredients so that you get as close to what is essentially the composition of a cocktail without actually having to use alcohol. So because we're not drinking any alcohol this week, I decided that I was going to go through and find three different cocktails that I could try to remake as other virgin variants of themselves, meaning they have no alcohol in them, or uh, looking at really classic co uh, mocktails that people have known about for forever. And we're gonna do a little bit of both today. To start off, we're gonna do a riff on a Shirley Temple, which is a grenadine-based soda, essentially, that relies on either club soda and sugar or uh, ginger ale, sometimes both, actually. Then we're gonna look at a virgin version of a peach bellini or a bellini. Finally, we're gonna look at my own personal spec for what I'm trying to approximate into a virgin white Russian. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first drink that we're gonna look at today is what's known as a Shirley Temple. It is named after the child star, but as far as I know has no actual historical connection to her, and is essentially uh, a combination of grenadine, a pomegranate syrup, and a combination of Sprite or Verner's, sometimes both. I'm not a huge fan of that spec. <laughs> Personally, I think that even though this is supposed to be like a sweet kitty cocktail, something that kids could enjoy, I think there are ways to elevate it a little bit. I'm going to show you guys what my spec is for a Shirley Temple and we'll taste that and see how that compares to a normal one. So as I stated previously, a Shirley Temple is normally a one ounce pour of grenadine poured alongside either eight ounces of Sprite, eight ounces of Verner's or ginger ale, and, uh, or I guess suppose a four ounce combination of both. My spec actually uses neither and relies on club soda. Uh, Q Club Soda. Now Q is a pretty popular brand as far as bartenders go. They've got some really great products including tonic, ginger beer, ginger ale, uh, seltzers, and club sodas. Um, this is just a standard, generally good product to use. I think it's definitely the direction you want to head if you're going to make something like this. So as the namesake starts off with grenadine, we're going to do a one ounce pour of that. This is a cocktail you build directly into the glass you're making it in. There's no need for a shaker here. Uh, it does help, and technically speaking, you know, if we're following proper rules, you should make it with a te you know, with a, with a shaker, at least for part of it, but because there's no liquids in here aside from you know lemon juice and lime juice aside from you know the syrups we're using there really isn't much of a reason to shake it there's really not much to shake there because you can't shake it with the club soda in it so you might as well just stir it we're gonna do an ounce of lemon juice ounce of lime juice this time i'm doing that to make up for the lost lemon lime flavor you get from a sprite and as always i'm using my traditional 100 percent lime and lemon juice pre-juices. Next up, because so far the only sweetness we have in there is the grenadine and it's gonna get overpowered by a lot of what goes into this glass, we're gonna do about a half an ounce of simple syrup just to keep things sweet. And remember, this is a kitty cocktail. This is something that's supposed to be very sweet. This is designed essentially for kids. There's really no reason to rely on anything else. So now we're gonna get a bottle opener. We're gonna crack this Q Club Soda. Maybe you should do yours a little bit less violently than me. <laughs> We're gonna pour that over to a good pour line, about there. And we're gonna stir that first so that everything gets mixed together. Do one more quick spin, and there you have it. My moderately enhanced version of a Shirley Temple. As you can see, it's very similar in colors, that predominant red color you get out of grenadine. And as far as ingredients go, it should be sweet like a Shirley Temple, but with more natural, robust fruit flavors. 
Let's give it a sip. Oh. That's actually a little undersweet. Hold on. I'll fix this in post, but that's actually a little bit, a little bit sour. Uh, I'm gonna go for what should be about another half ounce of simple syrup, so bring that up to a full ounce. This will be corrected for automatically in the recipe I post in the episode up on screen. But with that sugar in there, let's see how that comes out now. Vastly more sweet. In fact, actually maybe a little bit too sweet. So, you don't want to do about three quarter ounces of simple syrup instead of half to cut that difference in between and still leave some of that flavor in there. Right now though, this is essentially a, a less carbonated version of a Shirley Temple. It's got more lemon and lime flavor in there. The pomegranate's a bit more muted. Um, it, it tastes more fresh though, it tastes more natural. There's, 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 there are fewer pre-produced products in here that, than a regular Shirley Temple. Kids could enjoy as much as adults, even though an adult would probably just ask for vodka in this. It is less effervescent than a regular Shirley Temple because there is less carbonated material in here. This is mostly, you know, in terms of how large these glasses are, I'm assuming this is about a one to one and a half ratio, one ounce, like a one part syrup and juices, one part soda. But because it is, you know, a bit heavier, it is sweeter. I mean, it does kind of accomplish what the Shirley Temple is supposed to. Pretty good. More like a juice than a soda, actually, which is kind of nice. And the nice thing is, if you have more soda, you can just keep topping it off as you go. Give it some fresh life, and slowly cut down it, cut it down to where you like it. So next up, we're going to do something a little bit more uh, virgin cocktail adjacent. Uh, we're going to look at the Bellini. Now, the Bellini is a, an Italian drink that uses peach puree and uh, a sparkling wine, so champagne or Prosecco, probably Prosecco considering that's the Italian one. And that's about it actually. It's a very natural fruit flavored drink that's light and frankly pretty low ABV all things considered. We're gonna do a no ABV version of it though and because I don't have any champagne flutes you'd want to go for something similar to that that will help, you know, maintain some of that effervescence. Something that will keep it fizzy. I've got a highball glass here <clears throat> and this will work just fine. I'm gonna start by measuring out about three to three and a half ounces of my peach puree. Now this is a fresh homemade peach puree I actually just made. Uh, I used two white flesh peaches, some lemon juice, and simple syrup to sweeten to taste. So this is a very sweet puree. And the idea is that you want to take the peach and just turn it into something that can be stirred into a liquid. Something that can uh, be properly combined with something effervescent if you were to stir it. I don't have any real easy way to, to measure this without, you know, making a huge mess. So I'm just gonna go buy spoonfuls so about where three ounces would be. That's probably a little bit heavy on the peach puree right there, but I think that's fine, all things considered, seeing as how there's really only two ingredients going into this version of the drink. So now that we have our peach puree in there, we're gonna introduce just a little bit of ice so we have something to pour our effervescence over. All you really want is just enough ice to keep the thing cool and even out, you know, about an equal pour of these two ingredients. Now when I say two ingredients, I mean the second ingredient that goes into this drink, which is normally Prosecco, but instead today we're gonna to use ginger ale. So we're getting, you know, a nice ginger flavor and you know, a similar carbonation that keeps things light and frothy and will help that puree kind of lighten up a little bit. I'm gonna use Fever Tree today. Fever Tree makes generally good products, and in fact, actually, yeah, that's what you want. This is a bit of a more bold, less sweet ginger ale, which is actually kind of good. If anything, actually, you might also be, you know, a good idea to put a ginger beer in here, but I think this is a bit more approachable. And really all we need is just some carbonation. You could do this with some ginger syrup and club soda if you really wanted to just go for something that's very, very carbonated, something very light. I'm gonna pour this in. Oh. Don't worry, fellas, it happens to most guys. I guess I should have expected that. See, there, there is uh, some citrus in this peach puree, so I should have expected that to happen, all things considered. And actually, I've actually run out of spoons. So I'm gonna give this a quick stir with a knife just to get some of that puree off the bottom. If you intend on making this at home, I might suggest snaking the ginger ale down the side of the glass just to avoid the absolute mess this is making. So our glass is gonna be an absolute, you know, disgusting, sticky mess, but I think that'll work just fine, all things considered. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the Virgin Peach Bellini. Let's go ahead and give it a sip. I like that, you know, honestly, I do like this head forming at the top right here. That is really nice. <laughs> yeah, that's actually really good, actually, hold on. That is actually surprisingly good. <laughs> so what, what this has in, in place of that winey Prosecco flavor is 
ginger, but it's a super light ginger, so with that carbonation placed in there, it's just kind of cutting the sweetness of the puree down, which is really nice. And it's bringing out this, this is very fruity and light drink. It's really, really good, actually. Like, I really enjoy that. It's super fresh and lightly sweet. This is something that if an adult wanted a Bellini and they were like, can you make that virgin? This is like the best way to do it. Just give it a little bit of sweetness in the puree with a little bit of lemon juice to brighten the whole thing up. Maybe do it in the cocktail, not prior to it, so you don't cause it to foam like that, but that is, that is a Bellini. Straight up. That is no doubt a Bellini. That is really, really good. Wow. Let's make another one of that for dinner tonight. That is, that is too good. It's too good. <laughs> Now with the Bellini out of the way, we can move on to our final drink, which was actually kind of a challenge to find a spec that I liked for. This is a Virgin White Russian, so this is going to require a couple of things. It's going to have to have a bold coffee flavor, some creaminess, uh, some light chocolatiness, and sweetness. That's going to be the basic premise upon which we're going to build this. And that means that we're going to have to require a couple of ingredients that you're going to have to make yourself or buy. Firstly, you're going to need a unsweetened, like, black cold brew coffee. Um, I'm gonna use Stoke today. I think you can probably get something better than this. This is pretty weak coffee, actually. I would go for something that's maybe about twice as strong as this, because this is really not super in-your-face cold brew coffee. You're also going to need a cream of some kind. I'm gonna go for half and half, which is half whole milk, half cream. You can probably also do heavy cream, but I wouldn't do heavy whipping cream, because it's not gonna be necessary. You need just a little bit of a chocolate syrup. I'm just gonna use Hershey's. It doesn't really make a difference what you use. You can also probably just put some straight up fresh melted chocolate into this, and as long as it will mix into the drink properly, you're good to go. And then simple syrup for sweetening to taste. To start this off, we're gonna have to put three ounces of our half and half cream into a shaker. This is going to be a shake and drink. And we're actually also going to dry shake this. So the purpose of dry shaking this is actually just going to be to add a little bit of lightness to the beverage and make it a little frothy, make it kind of like a milkshake actually. And I found that um, three ounces of cream gives you pretty, a pretty solid foam actually. To that three ounces of cream, we're going to add six ounces of coffee. Now there should be, you could probably make a case to say, hey, um, should you dry shake it before you add the coffee? And the answer is, you know, maybe. You probably could. But then again, as long as it gets dry shaken and it gets shaken well enough to produce, you know, some light and foaminess, you're not really gonna have to worry about that too much, I don't think. Next up, we're gonna need just a little bit of Hershey's syrup. You really don't need a measure on this, frankly. Anything that you would need to measure, like up to a quarter ounce, is probably as much as you need. So I'm just going to free pour a small amount of chocolate in there, a very small amount. Because cold brew coffee has a lot of naturally strong occurring chocolate notes, you really don't want to play into those too heavily. There's already going to be a lot of sweetness in this from that alone. You just need a little bit of that chocolate flavor to mellow out what coffee flavor you do get. And then likewise, you only need just a splash of simple syrup to keep this sweet. Remember, these are all sweeter cocktails. That's kind of the point. Mocktails aren't supposed to be super, you know, there's no spirit. So how can they be spirit forward? I'm gonna secure my lid on top of this, give it a quick dry shake, just to try to get some of that cream foaming up, and then we'll add ice, chill, and pour. Let off the pressure. Oh, <laughs> I think I might have gone a little overboard. Yep, I went a little overboard. <laughs> I'm gonna change this up a bit. I'm not gonna shake this again. It really isn't necessary, and I'm just gonna make a mess if I do. Here you get a rocks glass, an old fashioned style glass that you would put like a white Russian into, and pour. But that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Virgin White Russian. It's a bit hard to see from this front angle, but if you look on the side, you might be able to notice that there is a clear, foamy head from that cream, essentially creating almost a whipped cream at the top. But it's not as heavy as a whipped cream because we didn't use full cream. It's only half and half. Give this a taste. Actually, a little undersweetened. <laughs> because I held off so much on the syrup and the chocolate, um, you're getting some of the chocolatiness, but this is actually quite dry. The coffee is a lot more present here than it was before, and what I've basically done is just create a cocktail shaken latte, almost. It's actually quite good. When you make it sweeter, you get more chalky, chocolatey notes, more um, lighter coffee notes. This is a bit heavier on the coffee the way I built it this time. Personally, I really, really like that. Um, 
but yeah, it, it just comes out solid. It's just good. And as far as a virgin drink goes, if, somebody, if you were to give this to somebody, they might not be like, oh yeah, that's a white Russian. But they would definitely think, oh yeah, that's a decent cup of coffee right there. It's light, frothy, airy, it's a bit dressed up. It's nice, and it gets the job done, which is probably the most important thing. All right there, folks. Well, today we focused on three homemade, homemade interesting alcohol-free cocktails or mocktails that you guys can enjoy on your dry week in the event you ever want to try doing one. I recommend it for every single person out there who does a decent amount of drinking, especially if you work in a bar setting because it's helpful to know exactly where you're at with your own personal health. As always, I'm going to use this as a quick reminder to say that at the bottom of every description, there is a couple of phone numbers that are linked to various alcohol addiction substance or personal self-abuse lines. If you do need to contact somebody for help, you are not alone. There are always people who are there to help you. And that's serious enough though. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this bit of interesting chemistry, more or less. And until the next episode, we go back to our uh, regular programming. Stay dry.